Let's move on to the other political story of the day, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, Congress MP Rahul Gandhi who's gone to Cambridge to deliver a speech. Many people have turned around and said that what he has said borders on being very, very economical with the truth. It is less fact, more fiction. These questions are up in the air, but of course there is also plenty of politics over his claims. And many of those claims are also bordering on whether or not it would hurt the interest of our country. At a time when the G20 leadership is in Bharat and at a time when nations are looking up to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and India to offer solutions to many, many geopolitical issues, including the Russia-Ukraine conflict. At a time when the world is saying India is on the rise and India is the shining star, we have an MP of the Lok Sabha who's standing on foreign soil and saying India is not a place to be and India is being blown through smithereens and democracy is in peril and he's pointing to certain people sitting in the audience of certain uh, you know, uh, backgrounds and saying they are in threat in our country, sparking off huge levels of criticism and politics. Let's look at some of the sharp attacks that have come from Mr. Rahul Gandhi. Now, here are the attacks that have come in in the first place. Uh, what he has said, is it perspective or is it a propaganda? Many people would say that it's, some would say it's perspective, other people would say it's just unidirectional political propaganda that's happening. Let's listen into what he had to say. Indian democracy is under pressure, is under attack. We are facing, uh, we're facing an attack on the, on the basic structure of Indian democracy. Large number of politicians have Pegasus on, my phone, on, on their phone. Uh, I've, I've been called by uh, intelligence officers who tell me, listen, please be careful what you're saying on the phone because we are, uh, we are sort of recording this stuff. Uh, so this is a constant, constant uh, pressure that we feel. And you've also, you've also heard of the attack on minorities, uh, the attack on the press, the, so, so you get a sense of what is going on. Where are the numbers? Where are the actual numbers to back those claims? Will an intelligence officer actually call you on your phone saying you're being listened into and you have a recording of that conversation? Some questions that are being asked. Can you point at somebody sitting in the audience and mark them out from their ethnicity from their background and say you are in danger in the country, do you have the numbers to back it? And there's criticism on that way too, on that route too. But is there a continuum? Is what Dr. Subramaniam Jayashankar had to say that there is a continuum bit by bit, look at it from a larger perspective and a continuum versus January the BBC documentary comes, February George Soros makes his comments and March it is Rahul Gandhi. So is this targeting of the Modi government from abroad, is this a reality? Now, California in 2017, this is what he had to say. He said RSS and PM are fiddling with the foundational structure of India. So this was said by Rahul Gandhi. At that point in time, the targeting happened in Singapore in 2018. He went ahead to say some people are using anger and, and violence to win elections. In Germany also in 2018, Modi government's exclusionary politics has created a platform for hate. So it's been going on, what Mr. Rahul Gandhi has been saying over the years. It's been the same repetition of the same point of view or perspective, as the Congress party would call it. This is what Sardar R.P. Singh has tweeted just a short while ago when I said certain references were made. I take strong objection to Rahul Gandhi pointing toward a Sikh youth at Cambridge University and saying that Sikhs are treated in India as second-class citizens. This rhetoric is coming from a leader whose father and grandmother were involved in the killing of more than 30,000 Sikhs in Punjab and Delhi. Isn't that an irony? Now, what Mr. Rahul Gandhi has said, is it fact or is it fiction? Let's go straight into the face-off. We have Mr. Amit Malviya. IT cell head of the BJP and also its national spokesperson. And we also have Mr. Tehseen Punawala, Congress-leaning political analyst. Namaste, Jai Hind. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much. And before we get into the debate, Tehseen Punawala, congratulations on parenthood. Uh, welcome to parenthood. 
and let's hope it's a nice and pleasurable experience for you. So congratulations there. But now let's get into the debate. What Mr. Rahul Gandhi has said, Mr. Amit Malviya or Amit Ji, is it true or is it all nothing but fiction? Khayali Pulao. Aaron, this isn't the first time when Rahul Gandhi has gone on foreign soil and has berated India. It would have perhaps made sense if what he said was substantiated or had a ground to stand on. Let me just pick on a few things that he said and demolish them one after the other. He spoke about the Pegasus software and he was therefore implying that India is a surveillance state. Now, the Supreme Court appointed committee sought 29 phones uh, and they found that the software or the Pegasus traces were not in any one of them. Now, if Rahul Gandhi did really have a concern, he should have handed over his handset to the forensic experts and allowed them to check if indeed Pegasus was used. Now, this allegation, although bereft of any merit, is also devious in the sense that it has been raised at a point when India is hosting the members of G20. And let me remind your viewers that the last time he raised the Pegasus issue was just before an important parliamentary session. So the question is, that is Rahul Gandhi speaking for somebody and raising these contentious issues which are devoid of any facts and have been settled by the highest court of the land only mm. to distract from the real issue and to distract from India's rising stature in the world. Right. Now, the second point, G. he spoke about minorities and minorities being under attack. I want to remind Rahul Gandhi that the day he was speaking this fallacy in the United Kingdom, Nagaland and Meghale, two states which are minority dominated, 85 to 90 percent Christian and tribals, voted for the BJP led coalition. In fact, the Congress drew a blank in Nagaland and they have been reduced to a partly sum in Meghale. Now, you can make all sorts of allegations, and clearly the Congress and the assorted opposition has been making these allegations since 2014. Hmm. Whether it was the church attack, lynching, the beef controversy, they were all manufactured controversies to try and paint the BJP and RSS as not being benign as far as the minorities is concerned. Where the truth is completely to the contrary. Right. The Modi government has made no difference between people as far as governance is concerned. And the biggest beneficiaries, if I may say, of the welfare programs, along with the OBCs and the Dalits, have been the minorities. Hmm. Because they were the ones who were majorly See, deprived. One of, one, of the, one of the issues or pain point I have with the ruling disposition, that's the government, is that they have not yet bothered to define who minorities are. There is no benchmark to define minorities. Somebody who are 18 to 20 percent of the country's population, can they be minorities? This game of minorities, what happens to those who are linguistic minorities? What happens to their benefits? So this government has fallen short as far as actually defining minorities properly and doing good as far as ethnic and my linguistic minorities. And minorities is a state subject because the minorities are different. In nine states and union territories in our country today, Hindus are minorities, but they've got no rights in these states and or minority benefits. So that's a pain point with the current disposition in terms of minority benefits. Very different point of view from what Mr. Raoul Gandhi would be alluding to. Another uh, thing, Abit Malveti, uh, what the Supreme Court note said, on the basis of detailed examination and analysis, it is concluded that five out of the 29 phones may have had some infection due to a malware or poor cyber hygiene and the data available is limited to reach a conclusion that such an anomaly is due to Pegasus. Despite efforts for months using scientific methods. So they found malware in five of the 29 phones, but it was not Pegasus. The other thing this committee said is that the government did not cooperate. Their position remained the same as it was with the Supreme Court. So that's also another thing. The third thing, Amit Malia ji, criticizing Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the BJP and the RSS is not equal to taking an anti-India position. It's very convenient to link the two. I can criticize the Prime Minister. That doesn't make me anti-India. Well, let me take the points one by one. Jay. The first point on what is a minority. Hmm. You're absolutely right that the term minority needs to be defined more specifically. And you're again right when you say that it's a state subject. And in fact, linguistic minorities 
constitute what defines minority. But in parlance, in political parlance, the word minority has come to signify Muslims. So Christians in this country are never referred to as minorities, unfortunately, neither are Jains or for that matter Sikhs. So this is a politically convenient euphemism for the word Muslim. So if I take the cue, Rahul Gandhi always and specifically speaks only about Muslims because they make a big vote block and the Congress would warn them in their community. The second point is about the observation of the Supreme Court and I can't disagree with you on that particular matter. And thirdly, is the criticism of the Prime Minister and the government akin to criticizing the nation? Of course it isn't. But when Rahul Gandhi makes these allegations on a foreign soil and a matter that has been completely settled by the Supreme Court, when he lies, mm -hmm. I don't even want to use the word economical with truth, he's in fact lying to his audience when he talks about Pegasus, then it does raise question that why such issues are raised at critical times, like when India is hosting the G20, mm. when India is just about to start an important parliamentary session. So is Rahul Gandhi a prop in the hands of the foreign powers? Okay. And I so will just give you one example, Anand. Let me finish this. This is an important point. In his speech in uh, Cambridge, Rahul Gandhi, in fact, justified the Chinese authoritarianism. He says that they owe their harmony to society and not to individual liberty, like is the case in the United States. Hmm. And he further goes on to say it's because he wants order, because they have had civil wars so, and strikes and so on and so hmm. forth. So now, hmm. now, uh, Anand, just, just bear with me for 30 seconds. This is the same Rahul Gandhi who's enjoyed the Chinese hospitality in Beijing, has received donation in the Rajiv Gandhi Foundation. Th those are all, those are all matter of record. Those are all matter of record. And, and, and Amitji, uh, you can draw your political inference to that. But to say that this is what America respects and this is what China respects, this is America's perspective, this is China's perspective. So the point of view can also be that he has just come out and said, this is how Americans think, this is how the Chinese think. This is the liberal democratic way and this is the Chinese communist way. And this is what works in these two places. He has stopped from there. He has not said that I like this or I like that. He's just compared the no, two. So he, no, let, he, let me clarify, please. He's hmm. gone on to say that it is justified. He uses that phrase. No, from from China's point of view, Chinese model from, from China's point, no, no, from China's point of view, what China is doing is justified for them. Can and be any another inference? So please, please, please hold your view. Please, okay, you made your point of view. Now, Tessin Pulawala, thank you for your patience and come in. How many elements of fact have been presented by Mr. Rahul Gandhi when he's made all these claims? And is that not a cause for concern? Please, go ahead. Tessin, you're on mute, please. You're on mute, please. I have not done anything. My team has not done anything. So, please don't uh, allude to say no, you, no. you muted my voice. No, That's no. not the case. Now, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Thank you. No, I won't say that you will stifle my voice because for, for everyone I know, you would stand up for my voice to speak. So, thank you, Anand, and Namaskar to you and uh, to your audience. Two or three very important points. Mm. I just want to clarify on the first uh, pertinent point that uh, Mr. Malvia referred to, which was uh, the speech in Cambridge. Mm. Mr. Gandhi starts his speech by saying that I will speak about Bharat Jodo and an Indian model, an American model, which you rightly said is a liberal democratic model, and a Chinese model. So he's comparing two models out there. Mm. So to say he's liking one model over the other is absolutely unjustified. I just wish the speech would have been heard completely. For the record, Cambridge sticks up that Rahul Gandhi studied in their university. We know leaders who've gone to court to hide their degrees. Let's come to the larger points of Pegasus, which Mr. Malvi has been very critical about. Like Anand, you pointed out rightly, the Most Honorable Court has said that this government did not cooperate with a Supreme Court-appointed committee on Pegasus. It did not cooperate. And the five mobiles out of the 29 in which malware was found could have been Pegasus, could not have been Pegasus. We don't know because the government did not cooperate. So why was the government not interested in, in cooperating with the Supreme Court when army generals, judges mm. of the Supreme Court, opposition leaders and ministers were alleged to that their phones have been tapped or not tapped? If the government had nothing to hide, they should have gone ahead and cooperated. The government did not cooperate, hence we could not reach a conclusion. Point number one. 
Point number two on the minorities. Mr. Malviya is right, and so are you on the definition of minorities. I was the one who fought on the minority rights in the most honourable Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said that a law needs to come out with regards to this violence. It actually praised the law, the draft law that I put in. Do you know what happened, uh, Anand? After that, Mr. Malviya is right. It's a state subject. The most honourable Home Minister Amit Shah got up in Parliament on a Supreme Court judgment in my case and said, "We will not bring in this law." Opposition states that brought in the law. The governor till date hasn't signed it. Rajasthan, West Bengal, Jharkhand. But even further, I went to the Home Secretary and, like you said, to define minorities and to define lynching, we defined it and we said minorities could be a Hindu in Delhi from Karnataka who can't speak Hindi. Could be a linguistic minority. We've defined it in our draft law. The Supreme Court has said we must have this law. The government of India is not passing it, not allowing state governments to pass it. This is their commitment to what to what they say. They say one thing on TV, they come on another thing. On the last issue that Mr. Malviya raised, Nagaland, I absolutely respect and congratulate Mr. Malviya and his party for a phenomenal victory in Nagaland. But Mr. Malviya is a representative of this government, or somebody who speaks for the BJP. In 2016-17, the most honourable Prime Minister promised each one of us that the Nagaland Accord would be made public in a matter of a few days. This accord, as is being said by the, those who are uh, who are said mm. to be insurgents in Nagaland, gives Nagaland a separate constitution, a separate parliament, and a separate flag. Even before this present election, the insurgents said we will allow. Please look at the wording. We will allow elections to happen because the government has given in to our demand. The government never comments on that. Mr. Malviya, I am very happy you removed 370 from uh, Kashmir. Why isn't the government giving me? The, what is it signed with the Naga insurgents? Okay. I was so, so you, you you have made point. Tessie... one last point. Okay. Just one last point. Okay. Just one last point. Yeah, I absolutely respect Prime Minister Modi. He's my Prime Minister, but I did not like it when Prime Minister Modi went abroad and said, before he became Prime Minister, I quote him: "People were uh, people were unhappy that they were born in India. They would curse their luck that they were born in India, and they said they want to leave India." Mm. I did not like it when my Prime Minister said that my pichle saath saal ka kuda. I was cleaning the garbage for 60 years before he became prime minister. I did not like my prime minister insulting him. He's on a constitutional post. He said that abroad, hmm. but I won't call him an anti. But, but so here, 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 here is where here is where Tessin Punala one or two aspects before Mr. Ramit Malviya responds to you. When you claim that your phone has Pegasus, you have to give your phone for it to be searched. How many people gave their phone, including the person who alleged that he had phone? The other thing is, will an intelligence officer ever call you on your phone and say your phone that I am calling you to warn you is tapped? So where is that phone call and who is that intelligence officer? The other thing, the the point point is, please hear me out. Claims can it's very easy to claim things, but you can't prove things. You have not backed your claims with proof. The court very clearly said, and the bear the panel very clearly said that the malware found in these phones. Is not Pegasus, despite months of scientific experiments. That's only five out of twenty-nine phones. The remaining two, remaining phones, did not have anything in them. So please, let's not let's not misconstrue what happened. The government did not cooperate. That's one point. But the panel went and explored all the phones that were submitted. Only twenty-nine were submitted. That did not include the power phone pointed by, made by Mr. Rahul. The other thing is, Mr. Rahul Gandhi points at a Sikh. At a time when Amrit Pal Singh is fanning Khalistani flames and says you are not safe, you are a second-class citizen. On what basis has he said that? Please show me once when the Prime Minister has come out and said that Muslims and and Sikhs in our country are second-class citizens. There is no single time that the Prime Minister said that. Mr. Rahul Gandhi stood there in Cambridge and said this Prime Minister says you are second-class citizen. Show me the proof, sir. If you don't have the proof, as a Congress MP, as a Lok Sabha MP, as an elected representative, you are being irresponsible if you cannot back your statements with facts. You can't make loose statements like this when you know the world is watching you as an Indian standing there. That's my humble point of view, representation, and you can say, please go back and scour any time where you have seen the Prime Minister who himself lived two years as a Sikh. He will come down and call Sikhs second-class citizens, sir. You have to say something which I will believe. No, I am I am an educated person. I can see the uh, uh, this one. As an Indian citizen, I am asking this question. But Mr. Amit Malviya, may, respond. May, may respond, to res- respond. Respond to Tehsin to Tehsin Punawala. I'll just park my observations. Sure. But uh, Tehsin Punawala says you you wrong. have been you have been uh, vague or opaque on what you have uh, promised on Nagaland. Don't claim victory where you have made compromises. And you do not walk the talk. some allegations there yes 
Look, um, first of all, I completely reject everything that Tessina said about the Naga Peace Accord. In fact, the government of India is in advanced talks and negotiations uh, with the uh, Naga people. And uh, the kind of development that the state has seen has been the reason why Nagaland has voted for the BJP-led alliance in such a large number. I do not know where Tessin gets his facts from, or for that matter, where the entire Congress party gets these uh, facts from. They see things uh, that the government has never said, and they hear things that the government never uh, meant. But uh, be as it may, the proof of the pudding is how legitimate the people think your promises and your claims are. And just going by the number, uh, and particularly the Congress draws a big zero in Nagaland, clearly people don't believe anything that you are saying. That is the final proof in a democratic setup. So um, the Congress needs to reflect on that. When Rahul Gandhi goes abroad and makes uh, sweeping statements that minorities are not safe, he is just brazenly indulging in appeasement politics uh, because there is nothing to suggest that there is any systemic uh, bias or um, uh, there is any systemic attempt to undermine the minorities. In fact, under the Modi administration, hmm. the minorities have done exceedingly well. And I want to make a few very r obvious but relevant points. The uh, only state where minorities enjoy great affluence is Gujarat. The BJP has been in power for almost three decades there. The state where minorities, and, and when I say minorities, I mean Muslims, because that is exactly what the Congress and Rahul Gandhi mean. The state in which they have the worst condition is West Bengal. The BJP has never been in power in West Bengal for the last uh, 75 years that we've been independent. So clearly, if the minorities are in a pitiable condition, it is the Congress. My, and my humble that request, my for. humble request, my humble request going forward. Uh, Tessin Punawala, I'll give you one more one yeah. minute to rebut because uh, I have to be fair on this face off. The aspect is, ladies and gentlemen, the polity of today, the government of today over the last eight years has not bothered to define who minorities are. They need to do it. Yes. And the, and the leaders of today need to stop using the word minority and secular for the political lexicon that they conveniently use. Let them define who this minority is. What do they mean by minority? Are they saying Muslims? Are Muslims really minority in this country or are they the second largest majority? Are Parsis minority? Are, are Tulu minority? Are uh, Sikhs minority? Define it, sir, so that we are very clear. Let's define it, please. And that's the responsibility of the government that's in power today. But Tasin Punawala, respond. Factless allegations. Uh, right. I think it was, I think Mr. Malvia, uh, before I fact check Mr. Malvia, Mr. Malvia hasn't responded to one thing. When the most honorable prime minister abroad as prime minister said Indians were not proud to be Indians, before he became Prime Minister. I know Mr. Malvia was proud, I can speak for him, to be Indian always. I know you, Anand, I know I was. Why was the Prime Minister bluffing? Or he said he was cleaning the kachra of this country. Mr. Malvia asked me, where did I get my knowledge about the Naga Peace uh, Accord from? From the NS NSCIN, uh, their peace accord with the Prime Minister, signed on August 5th. If they've signed it, why is the government still negotiating? Where they clearly state on record, and this is on all news channels, including yours, uh, Anand, where they say, that the government of India has recognized our sovereignty over Nagaland. Everything that's over land in Nagaland belongs to the people of Naga. And they go on to define it, something that's in, in debate. I won't want to get into that mm. today. Now let's come to the most pertinent point. I have a right to criticize my Prime Minister. I think it's my duty to criticize my Prime Minister mm. because that is what being a good Indian is about. I must show my Prime Minister where my Prime Minister is erring. So I don't think criticizing the Prime Minister should be looked at in a, in a See, matter that... that the, here is a problem. Is here is a, may, here, may, I, have may, to, may I, finish? I am finish? running out of time, so that's why. Yes, uh, Sir, please, yeah, quickly. Okay, continue. I'll give you another 20 seconds, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Now the BJP's argument, why do you criticize the Prime Minister abroad? The answer to that is your show is watched all across the world. People are going to watch it. If the Prime Minister is doing something that isn't right, it is a duty Back it with facts. My simple is point enough. is, sir. My simple point is, sir, when 30 Two lakh 25,000. No, no, no. I'm backing it with facts, sir. No. I'll just allow me 10 seconds yeah. to finish. Yeah, tell Two me. Two lakh 25,000 Indians. The highest ever last year gave up the Indian passport. It's the toughest thing to do. And they might Indian, be Indian like America, citizens, England, Indian Canada, citizens. One minute, one minute, one minute. One minute. Higher, one minute. India, 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 one India. No, 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 no. That has got nothing to do with how the ethnic communities. So they they, no, no. Caste, everywhere, or, or people across segments of society are treated in this country. If people choose to go abroad, they are making their choice. Nobody is asking them, putting a gun to their head why and asking them. No, 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 no. Don't ask why. why? Don't, don't deflect. That's in your deflect. 
Starting. My simple point is, sir. My, no, 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 please. What? My simple Why? point is, sir. Highest... Mr. Rao, don't shout over me, Tessin. I've given you no, fair point. Let's not do that. Please, let's not. Let's not do that. No, I'm just, I'm just making my, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, that. show me I'm one statement of fact that he's made, or one statement that he's made which is backed with hard numbers or facts. If he's done that, we'll put it out here. If he's not done that, then henceforth he must. Because he can't just shoot and scoot or make the same allegations again and again without having facts behind them to back it. That, that's my humble submission. Amit Malviya and Taseen Punawala. Thank you very, very much. We're going to take a very, very short break.